For this lesson, we're going to look at uh, indeterminate forms in L'Hopital's rule. And what this is, is a, it's a technique to solve limits. So we're kind of going back, not kind of, we are going back to limits with this stuff. But this is a technique that involves derivatives, so I couldn't show this to you earlier. There are multiple types of indeterminate forms for this lesson. We're only going to look at two of them. There are several more, but we'll get into those later, maybe. So, uh, your indeterminate forms, and I've used this phrase before, uh, your indeterminate forms are 0 over 0, infinity divided by infinity, or 0 times infinity. And all this means, and this is my own definition, but it just means you cannot determine what the answer is simply by looking at those fractions or that product. Uh, if you have a 0 on top, that tells you the fraction equals 0. However, 0 on bottom tells you the fraction is undefined. So it's like you have two opposing forces battling it out, and you don't know which one wins. Same thing with infinity, and infinity on top should give you a huge number, but an infinity on bottom tells you that the limit should be zero, the answer should be zero, and so we have those two infinities battling it out, and it really matters. Uh, we're we're going to find out how to determine which one wins, uh, and that's by using something called L'Hopital's rule. Uh, we have done some indeterminate limits in the past, and this is kind of how they looked. If I plug 4 into this problem, 4 squared uh, minus 16 is zero, 4 squared minus 4 times 5 plus 4 is also 0. This is an indeterminate form. Uh, but in the past, what we've done is we've simply factored and canceled, which this one does quite easily. That's x plus 4, x minus 4 on bottom. You have x plus, nope, x minus 1, x minus 4. We would cancel the x minus 4s, and then we would plug in the 4. 4 plus 4 is 8, uh, 4 minus 1 is 3, and that would be your answer, 8 thirds. Um, same thing for this one. If I plug infinity into the top and bottom, 3 times infinity plus 1 is infinity. Infinity squared minus 9 is also infinity. That's an indeterminate form. So we used uh, a way to solve that. And for limits approaching infinity, what we did is we looked at degree on top and bottom, which only works if you have polynomial uh, numerators and denominators. Uh, my degree on bottom is bigger. And so we learned the rule that if your degree on bottom is bigger, that this thing actually is approaching 0. Um, and so that's a couple of indeterminate forms with alternative ways of solving using factoring. Uh, sometimes we rationalize multiplied by conjugates. We did a bunch of weird techniques. But there is something called L'Hopital's rule. And honestly, I think L'Hopital's rule is easier than factoring and canceling and doing those other techniques. Uh, first, L'Hopital's rule only works if your limit is in the quotient indeterminate form. So L'Hopital's rule will work if your limit is infinity over infinity or 0 over 0, and that's the only time it will work. And the way you do L'Hopital's rule is if you have one of those indeterminate forms, you simply take derivative of top and bottom separately and reevaluate the limit. So the limit of f over g ends up being the same as the limit of f prime over g prime, and hopefully the derivatives will give you something that is not indeterminate form. Uh, the one thing you have to make sure you are not doing the quotient rule. Please do not do low d high minus high d low over low low. That is not L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule is simply derivative top, derivative bottom. So uh, let's use L'Hopital's rule on a few problems. Um, let's go back to those same two problems we just did a minute ago. Uh, this one, if you plug in 4, you do get 0 over 0. And by the way, always check to make sure it's indeterminate because if you use L'Hopital's rule, uh, on a non-indeterminate form limit, you will get the wrong answer. This only works if you have 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So what I'm going to do with this one is, uh, since I do have 0 over 0, I'm simply going to do the limit of the derivatives of top and bottom. So the derivative of x squared minus 16 is 2x. The derivative of x squared minus 5x plus 4 is 2x minus 5. And I will reevaluate that limit. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 4 minus 5 is 3, and we get the same answer we got by factoring and canceling, only I think derivatives are easier than factoring. We can do the same thing for number 4. When I plugged in infinity, you got infinity over infinity. And uh, the nice thing about this is L'Hopital's rule bails you out if you forget those rules about degree on top and bottom. Some people have a hard time remembering those. So if you forget, well, see, that's infinity over infinity. I can L'Hopital that. We'll just say L'Hop. We can L'Hop that, right? So I can do L'Hopital's rule. Let's L'Hop it. We're going to lope it. The derivative of the top is simply 3. The derivative of the bottom is going to be 2x. And if I plug in infinity, I get 3 over infinity, which is a number divided by infinity is 0, which is the same thing you get if you use that rule about degree on top and bottom. 
so that is L'Hopital's rule in use. You simply do a derivative of top and bottom, and you reevaluate the limit. Okay, let's try number five here. Uh, e to the x minus 1 over x. If I plug in 0, e to the 0 is 1 minus 1 over 0. That is indeterminate. So I will do L'Hopital's rule. So let's lope this. Limit as x approaches 0. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x minus 1. That would go away. Uh, the derivative of x is 1, and I reevaluate. e to the 0 is 1 divided by 1. There's your answer. Isn't that sexy? Isn't L'Hopital's rule nice? It's such a nice way to solve limits that otherwise maybe you couldn't do without a calculator. Uh, and numbers 5 and 6 are examples of problems that you cannot solve by factoring or anything like that. Uh, if I plug in 0 for this one, sine of 0 is 0. 0 for x is 0, so we'll use L'Hopital's rule. Lope. Let's lope this. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. The derivative of x is 1. So I'll plug in 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. Simply take derivative of top and bottom and reevaluate the limit. Yeah, 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 makes sense, makes sense. All right, let's try this one. Uh, see, I call this one 6b because it came to me after I copied all the rest in. Uh, x approaches 4, x cubed minus 64. 4 cubed is 64 minus 64 over 4 squared is 16 minus 9. 64 minus 64 is 0. 16 minus 9 is 7. That's not indeterminate. Please don't joke, do a derivative. 0 divided by 7 is simply 0. That is our answer to this one. Um, and the reason I stuck this one in here after I, uh, after the fact, well, I called it 6b. The reason I stuck this one in here is just to show you that you always, 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 always plug in first because every now and then you look up and you get the right answer by plugging in. If you dive straight into L'Hopital's rule, you will end up with... 3x squared over 2x, and if I plug 4 into that, 3 times 16, 3 times 4, 4 squared is 6, 3 times 16 is 48, 2 times 4 is 8, and you get an answer of 6. If you do L'Hopital's rule when there is not an indeterminate form, which is the wrong answer. So you do not do L'Hopital's rule when you're not looking at an indeterminate form. So do not do, make sure you plug in, make sure you plug in first. All right, uh, let's see, number seven, uh, limit as x approaches infinity. ln of infinity is infinity. If you think about the graph of ln x, it does this. It does kind of level off. It doesn't go up very fast, but it is always increasing. So as I go to the right, this thing is going up. Plug in infinity for x, that's definitely infinity, right? So then I'll do L'Hopital's rule. So let's lope number seven. Limit as x approaches infinity. That will be the derivative of ln x is one over x over one which is 1 over infinity, whoa, what is that? Infinity over 1, which is 1 over infinity is 0. So we get an answer of 0 for number 7. Number 8, if I plug in negative infinity, let's see, negative infinity squared would be infinity. e to the negative negative infinity is e to the infinity, which is huge, right? That's infinity over infinity. So I can do L'Hopital's rule, so let's do that. Limit as x approaches negative infinity. Uh, my top derivative is 2x over uh, the derivative of e to the negative x is e to the negative x times negative 1, right? So I'm going to clean that up to um, negative e to the negative x. And I'll plug in negative infinity again. 2 times negative infinity is negative infinity. Negative e to the negative infinity. See, that's negative. And e to the negative negative infinity is infinity. Hey, it's L'Hopital's rule again. We get another indeterminate form. If this happens, if you get an indeterminate form after your first lope, then you lope it again. So I'm going to do derivatives once again to limit as x approaches negative infinity. And we keep going until we do not get an indeterminate form. So the derivative of 2x is 2 over the derivative of negative e to the negative x is going to be positive e to the negative x. And now when I plug in infinity, I get 2 over e to the negative negative infinity. It's infinity. And this thing is approaching 0. So there is L'Hopital's rule. You simply do derivative of top and bottom independently uh, if you have an indeterminate form when you first plug in. Now, all of those were quotient indeterminates. There is a product indeterminate form that you need to know how to tackle. Uh, and the product indeterminate form is 0 times infinity. And, you know, those are two forces battling. 0 times something should be 0, but infinity times something should be freaking huge. Uh, so they're battling it out, and we have to determine which one wins. 
Uh, the problem is you can only use L'Hopital's rule when you have a quotient. So uh, you do not do the derivative of each one in a product. What I first have to do is turn this product into a quotient. And that's not too hard to do. You just have to take one of the two functions and move it to the denominator. So uh, I see the e to the negative x. So that's just kind of begging to be moved to the bottom. So I'm going to change this function to the square root of x over e to the x. Um, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to plug in infinity, didn't I? Ah, you always plug in first. I just said that a second ago, didn't I? I'm such a loser. All right, uh, let's plug in infinity first. Uh, e to the negative infinity times the square root of infinity. Um, e to the negative infinity, that's 1 over e to the infinity, right? And the square root of infinity is just infinity. That ends up being infinity. 1 over e to the infinity is 0 times infinity. So that is a product and determinant. e to the negative infinity is 0. Uh, in limit world, anyway. Square root of infinity is infinity. So what we do have to do is turn this into a fraction. And I do that by taking my e to the negative x and moving it down. And then if I plug in infinity, I do have infinity divided by e to the infinity, which is your quotient and determinant. Now I can go and lope this. So I'll do the limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative of square root of x is 1 half x to the negative 1 half over the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And I'm going to clean that up. Um, that's what 1 over 2 root x over e to the x, right? Right? Which is the same thing as 1 over 2 root x e to the x. So sometimes you do have to do some simplifying. Now that I've cleaned up, I'm going to plug in infinity, and I get 0 over 2 times square root of infinity times infinity. That's one big honking infinity, which 1 over infinity is 0. And that's going to be our answer for this one. It's always frustrating. I don't like getting an answer of 0. I want something more meaningful, like pi or e or 7. I don't know. So uh, if you do have a product in determinate form, you need to first turn it into a fraction before you can go into L'Hopital's rule. Um, one more, one more. Uh, this is an interesting problem. I may have to change this. I may have to create a new one. Oh, let's see. Plug in uh, infinity squared is infinity, and ln of infinity is also infinity. Uh, ooh, infinity times infinity, that's not indeterminate. If you take a big number and multiply it by a big number, you get a big honking answer. So our answer to this one is infinity. That is not an indeterminate form. Um, so what I'm going to do is change this and so that I do get an indeterminate form. So hang on just a second, and we'll work something else out here. All right, here we go. This one, I think, is going to work. Um, by the way, I, that, that really wasn't too much of a problem. We still were able to solve that limit in number 9, right? But I wanted to do L'Hopital's rule, and I couldn't do it. Okay, so uh, let's try this one. If I plug in 0, we're coming from the right. So 0 squared is 0. ln of x, as you approach 0 from the right. Now, I had to specify from the right because ln of something does not exist for negative x's. If you think about the graph of ln x, as I get close to 0 from the right, close to 0 from the right, this thing's going down towards negative infinity. And 0 times infinity is a product in determinate form. So we have to move one of these to the denominator. Uh, and just for the sake of making an example out of this, and this is going to make this run a little bit longer. Where are we now? 13 minutes. So this may make it run close to 17 or 18 minutes. Who knows? We'll see. You already know because you're looking at the time at the bottom, aren't you? Anyway, um, you have to move one of these two to the bottom. And I always get asked the question, how do you know which one to move? Well, if you move the wrong one, then the problem ends up blowing up and it doesn't get pretty. So just for the sake of showing you what happens if you choose the wrong function, I'm going to move ln x to the bottom, which means it's going to become ln of x all to the negative 1 power. Uh, now I've turned it into a quotient, and I can do L'Hopital's rule. So if I did L'Hopital's rule with that, my derivative of the top is nice. I just get 2x. That's a nice, clean, sexy derivative. But the bottom, what I've created, is a funky chain rule. I would have to bring down the negative 1 times ln of x to the negative 2 power. 
and then I would have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 1 over x. And if I clean that up, this thing is going to become, uh, let's see, if you divide by 1 over x, this is going to become 2x squared on top over negative ln of x squared. Um, and so what I did is I just kind of moved this x to the top and multiplied. Uh, and if you look at what I have after I took the derivative, my new function is actually uglier than the one I started with. I started with x squared over ln of x to the negative 1. Now I have 2x squared and negative ln x to the, to the that should be negative 2, um, which is uglier than what I started with. So what I'm, that tells me that I chose the wrong one to move to the bottom. So this is bad, and I'm going to have to start over. So I'm going to start over by moving, instead of the ln x, I'm going to move the x squared to the bottom. So we're going to try again. Let's see the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. I'll keep my ln x on top, and I'll move x squared to the bottom, which will make it x to the negative 2. Now I'll lope it. So let's do the L'Hopital's rule here. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x. The derivative of x to the negative 2, while it's harder than x squared, um, it's not too bad, right? So that's negative 2, x to the negative 3. And then we have to clean that up. So let's see. That's going to become 1 over x over negative 2 over x cubed, which is what? 1 over x times x cubed over negative 2, which turns into, let's see, x cancels x cubed, leaves me with x squared over negative 2, right? When you cancel. So you want to clean up. Don't just, don't go straight into plugging in. Um, always clean up before you start plugging in. So that canceled to a 2. Now if I plug in 0, 0 squared over 2 is 0. That's our answer. And once again, we get that frustrating answer of, in, of 0. But that's what it is. So there's L'Hopital's rule, products, and quotients. There are other forms that we're going to talk about later in BC. AB is going to be spared the more difficult ones. So there we go.